in the city, you see, people are flirting, but it's always a competition. Who wins? Trying to win in some way. But here it was play. It was just for the fun of it. And everyone did it to be nice, not to win. The dance ended with he and Sally back where they started, and now he was sweating, and so were the others. Thanks, Ed. You did pretty good for the first time. Really, he said. Really, said Allie. Sally with keen eyes. And just that fast, Sally was gone. The caller was announcing the next dance, and Ed did not know what to do. But before he could panic, a robust woman grabbed his hand. You look like you need a partner. My name's Gretchen. I'm new at this, said Ed, afraid of embarrassing himself. Maybe um, everyone is new once. You look like a keeper, though, and I saw you in the last set. And the caller began laying out the next dance. And Ed was a good learner, it turned out. There are, after all, only so many moves. Gretchen taught him the ladies' chain, and Bill showed him the right and left star. Circle was easy, as was forward and back. He got turned around on the right and left through and got totally lost in country corners. But no matter how inept he felt, the dancers were easy and helpful, laughing with pleasure at his attempts. When he found himself with George and Betty in a three-person basket swing, he almost forgot about Sally, and when he did remember, it occurred to him that this was part of her plan. But when the caller announced a triple dance where three couples danced together instead of two, he looked around the hall for Sally, hoping for her forgiving coaching, but he couldn't find her. Barbara did, though, and coaxed him into the line as the caller described elegance and simplicity. First couple make a right-hand star with the second, go halfway around, then left-hand star with the third, also only halfway around. The first and third couples do a right and left across. The first and second do a right and left back across the set. Ed couldn't keep this straight in his head. Off she goes, said the caller, announcing the tune and the dance, and Ed was in way over his head. After trying and failing to keep up with the dance, he let an eager young lady take his place at the bottom of the set when they reached the bottom. Ed tried to fathom the dance while watching it, but it was all a blur of moves going and patterns he couldn't understand. Amid all these strangers with only first names and no idea who they were, Ed felt more belonging than he had felt in years. Standing outside them, even for one dance, reminded him all too much of what was missing in his life. The music changed to tune. He asked a couple waiting if they knew the name. Moon and Seven Stars, said the man. Nice name. Yep, nice tune too, said the stranger as he jumped back into the dance. Ed decided to cool off and drifted toward the door. The cold December night felt good on his wet face and he stepped outside to gather its fresh fullness. Standing on the town hall porch, he saw the moon. And so he decided to find seven stars to go with it. But in fact, there were thousands. He walked away from the town hall to see the sky better and he looked up to see the moon and stars. And, and here, here, friends, is where the miracle happened. And every Christmas has a miracle for everyone if we're attentive enough. Okay, not really a miracle with shepherds listening to angels or wise men delivering gifts or anything like that. But here's where Ed made sense of it all. See, he left the, the view of the town hall out there in the dark and to catch a little bit of the sight of the pond behind the hall. And there, in the moonlight, amplified by the snow all over the ground, he saw a figure skating in figure eights on the pond. And as his eyes grew acquainted to the new light, he recognized that it was Sally out there. She moved across the ice so he could not tell if it was fast or slow. It was smooth, simple, like dancing to a music he couldn't hear. And then he heard it. He heard the music she was dancing to. No, not the distant sound of the band with the feet thumping. It wasn't even the music of the skates gently chewing through the ice. He heard the silence. That's right. He heard the quiet. Watching Sally in the blue paleness of light from galaxies and eons falling like snow on snow, he heard the quiet. And for the first time in his life, it was a presence, not an absence. The sky was not something up there, but came all the way down to the ground, reaching right down to his face, 
touching him as much as the friendly hands had touched him before. He could feel the starlight falling upon him and the moonlight. The music and the dancing in the town hall were now behind him. Sally and the pond were also vanishing. Everything became small. Only the quiet and the light were large. And he felt the quiet, the way your lungs feel the air on a cold night. This must be what the shepherds heard, Ed found himself thinking. Out there in the fields in the cold of a desert night, there is music in the quiet. And it fell upon the ear as moonlight falls upon the eye. Well, I'm sort of glad I went to church, he said to himself. And then suddenly he felt cold and the idea of warming up with a balance and a swing felt pretty good. And so he turned back toward the hall, climbing the steps on the last notes of the moon and seven stars. I want you to pray now. We don't do that much in liberal churches. You know, that they say about liberals, you know, all our, press, all our prayers are addressed to whom it may concern. But that's just the point. I want you to imagine that the universe is a who, not a what. We tend to think that everything that isn't us isn't alive. But what if it is? What if you could have a conversation with the moonlight? What if you could listen to the stars? What if the earth paid attention? What if they were all angels coming to give you a message? So let's talk to all of those whom it may concern. So here we are, world, the universe, angels, shepherds, babes, gods, whatever you are, how many you are, here we are on that day when everything is a you and nothing is an it. Yeah, here we are. Remembering that grandeur is not in tall buildings or in silver trumpets. It is not in the loudness or the tallness or the bigness or the richness. We're remembering that the miracles live in little things. The little things like the, the blue jay that perches right next to the window, the rabbit that we catch running across the lawn, and the pleasure of an icicle forming on a branch. We are distracted by all the grandiosities, all the things we make and think and believe are great, forgetting that you, all of you out there, are much greater than we know. So perhaps our prayer today is not just one of gratitude, but one of humility. We're here to remember that infants rule the world, that shepherds are messengers of God, that even the wisest creatures go wandering through the poorest neighborhoods looking for salvation. We're here to remember that everything is holy, and that we should do more to revere all that holiness. So let us pause in gratitude for fingernails and snow tires and gloves and old coffee and cleaning up of cats, of lunch, of trees with one leaf left, the flotsam and jetsam that is so holy we can't even understand it. That's why we're here. That's why we're here.
So let's sing together. And then I'll give you a word of blessing. And then you can sit down and listen to the tune I talked about. Yes. All right. The, the song we're going to sing, we're going to, there are four verses, but I think what we're going to do was we'll do one, two, and four. And I'll give you a little blessing. I'll play it through it once for you. Now remember, my piano skills are not nearly as good as I pretend them to be. Joy is a gift. It really is. You don't know when you're going to get it again, so you better grab it while you have. Unwrap it. And like everything else, you have to pass it along. If you keep it, it will not be joy anymore. It won't even be a smile. So you get the joy because someone has it. You get more by giving it. So when you leave today, give joy to someone, and then you get to keep it forever. So go. Be joyful. Rejoice and be glad as it says in the psalm because this too and every day is a day which the Lord has made. Rejoice on your tiptoes and be glad with all your heart. Now sit down and listen to the music. <laughs>
seven stars. Yes. Go ahead and do something else. Thank you.